I think we're live. We are live. We are. <laughs> and we live, baby. <laughs> hey, welcome to the Who That Podcast, the livest podcast this side of the Mississippi and the Nile River. Tell your friends, tell your family. We here again. The aliens are touched down. How you doing? Are you having a good week? Are you Corona free? Congratulations, blessings, blessings. As always, I am the first mate of the the mothership. This is B. How you doing? We got the captain, the Mario, right here. What's up? What's up? Also known as Paco. <laughs> we just been chilling. We have a very special episode. Uh, shout out to everybody that's tuning in. Uh, shout out to all the support that we've been getting here lately. We keep getting more and more people. We have a very, very special episode uh, with a, a few guests. That's why we're doing it live a little bit different. It's our first time doing it a Zoom live for you guys. But we have a few guests that you're going to meet just in a little bit uh, from the reality show, The Thin Tale of Psych Life, The Real Thin Tale. Hmm. Just crank it all the way up, then. All see. right. How about this? This a little Is bit better. Is that better? Is that we better? Now? But we are very pleased to introduce to you the cast of the Real Fem Tales Bike Life. Um, we have Phoenix. We have Miss Taboo. We have Ebony Star, and we have Socks who are all from the show. They're uh, located in Texas, and they've yes. been nice enough to jump on to the mothership, and, and they're going to hang out with us, and we're going to talk about the show for a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Pac, can you bring them in so they can say hi to everybody? Uh, yeah, uh, let's start. We'll start with Socks. If you'd like to, can you chime in, Socks, say hello? Hey, everybody. Hello, hello. How you doing? Doing pretty good. That's yeah. what's up. That's what's up. Taboo, you want to say hi to the people? Oh, you back. There you go. What's going on, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> Taboo is outside right now. She said she's enjoying this weather and, you know, smoking her cigarette. And <laughs> yes, that's right. You're chilling on a Sunday. Yes, I'm relaxing on Sunday. Yeah. Uh, Ebony, this is Ebony Star here also. Say hello, Ebony. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and right. and if, have, if you've uh, been keeping up with the real film tales, Ebony is the one that's smashing a plate of food through four episodes, <laughs> crushing it, <laughs> crushing it. So, <laughs> yes, I, so um, and uh, up here in the in the pretty red, we have a uh, Miss Phoenix. How you doing? Hey, what's up, you guys? Glad to be here. Yeah. Hey, we're glad to glad to have you. Uh, somebody just said can't hear you guys. Is that an old one? Or yeah, I think that's an old one. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah we, oh, we got hearts. some hearts. We got some hearts. Oh, right. All right. <laughs> so, um, I guess let's get right to it. Um, yeah. I know. I don't know these ladies personally, but I've been working with these ladies for the past probably two months, and um, it's this is my first time really getting to speak with any of them. It's very interesting learning people through footage. Yes. Okay. Like, I feel like I might know some things about them that they don't, they don't know. know about yeah. themselves. Yeah. Like Taboo. Anytime I work with Taboo footage, Taboo, she speaks with her arms and hands. I got so much footage of her doing this and doing that. It's great, though. You know what I mean? So there's all kind of things like that. So um, say what? Lost Taboo. Did we lose her? Oh, she should be back. She'll be, be back. Let's see. It might have been a connection issue or something. Yeah. So yeah. um so y'all been working for the last two months. Um uh uh Miss uh 
I don't know what the, is it Rebel Win Dixie? The, uh-huh, it just yeah. lined the work. The work. Uh-huh. Raven Dixie. Yeah. Raven Dixie. There we go. She was on the on the show uh, for our Rise of the Entrepreneur, and she was talking about the show. Oh, that's my cord. I'm sorry. All right. Go sorry, ahead. guys. But she was talking about the show, and was giving us the the rundown. You know, like the birth of it, the conception of how she came up with the idea and everything. But I'm curious, like, how did how did you ladies personally get involved with the with the show? Did she like hit you up? Did uh did you audition? Cause I know we got we got to go to a, a casting for a few more cities coming yes, up yeah. that she was talking about. But so how, how did y'all how did y'all get involved with the show initially? Well, she put out information for casting for a reality show in uh, I believe Memphis and a couple of other cities. And I chimed in and was like, goodness, no Dallas. And she was like, it's coming, it's coming, don't worry. So when things didn't go the way they needed to with the initial project, she hit me up and let me know that she was looking to do something with Dallas ladies. And so of course, uh, Phoenix, Ebony, Star, and Taboo are all my girls, my win sisters. So, you know, yeah, got them on. <laughs> okay. Hey. Uh, Let's say, uh, let's, Phoenix, what about you? How about how did you get involved? Um, well, Sox um, hit me up and told me that um, when was cast in, she was like, I think you'd be good fit for it. Um, so I hit her up, and after we talked, she was like, definitely. So that's how I ended up in there. And then I told Taboo, and next thing I know, Taboo hit up when, and yeah. she was on the cast too. So all right, that's what's up. What about you, Ebony? Socks told me about it. She asked me, did I want to be a part of a project? And uh, she think I like it and be interested in it. And so I agree. Okay, cool. All right, shout out to Socks brought in. Right. Brought in. Good looking out for my folks, y'all. <laughs> we were originally supposed to be filming at um, Bike Week in Myrtle Beach. And when I initially mentioned it to um, a couple of my other friends, Taboo included, they had a, another event that conflicted with those dates. So when COVID came and shook up the whole world and changed all of our summer uh-huh. plans, um, uh-huh. it happened that her event was canceled and, and her and Phoenix are real close. And like she said, she um, mentioned it to her and then everything happened exactly the way it needed to. And here yeah. we are. It's a beautiful thing when that happens, isn't it? When everything just falls into place and it feels right. Yes. Organic. Right. Right. Man, organic. Organic is so beautiful. From growing a garden, I love organic. Right. Got to gotta have some patience with it. It all just falls in place. It all just falls in place. So what, for the people that don't know, what do they have to look forward to with this series? And what makes it stand out different than other reality style t- TV series? Who do you want to answer that question first? <laughs> yeah, right. You you said something. <laughs> Lord, well, I would say uh, what's unique about it is this this is our real lives. You know, we do bike life stuff almost every day. Um, it's no script. It's just real everything we do. You know, it shows sisterhood in a positive light on the bike set which is, I think everybody on here (laughs) is about positivity and encouraging more lady riders. So it's just a, it's a good platform for us to show what we already do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Taboo, you want to add to that? Um, I think it stands out in my opinion, because we all are different walks of life. We all have different perspectives we've all come into writing in a different, you know, introduced to it in a different way. Mm -hmm. And so it allows each one of us to be who we're going to be, but as well to be able to, it ain't about the bullshit. It ain't about the, I don't give a fuck what, you know, as long as they're okay, I don't care about what someone else may have said or what some, I know we're going to go do some big shit. And so that I could fuck with. Everybody here is on some, figuring out whatever if it's themselves figuring out who they are you know as a woman on the set it's it's well in motorcycling period it's a little you know we have different challenges so you know it's just being able to show those different challenges without um judgment 
right. that's what I like about it. Without judgment. I love that. That was that was that was beautiful. Real, wasn't it, Dad? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I I rock with that. <laughs> Any place you can be where you can find a passion and be happy, and then you don't have to worry about being judged for your beautiful. happiness. That's that's beautiful. It's very rare, especially in 2020. Right. So that's beautiful that all of y'all have that. Um, just like real quick, uh, I just got a question. It's not like show related, but it is bike life related. Uh, how long have y'all been just riding bikes like is this something that like you grew up with or uh that you come into it on your own later on in life like what got y'all how did this become your passion let's start with socks we'll go socks phoenix taboo ebony well i did not grow up around motorcycles i think i may have maybe one relative that even rides motorcycles um but i started out in denver um i was a part of a outlaw organization, I was property of, so I was primarily on the back. Most people that know me from home will tell you they remember when I said I had no desire to ride a bike ever. And I'm in Dallas and there's a ton of ladies on bikes and things just happened the way that I started riding. Um, I've always loved being a passenger. I just want to be on a motorcycle. So I absolutely love riding mine and it's, it's a, a life for sure for me. All right, all right. I need to get me a bike. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, with me, my family was kind of pretty much against motorcycling. Uh, my uncle had a very bad bike accident and lost his memory. So it was always never get on the bike until um, I wanted to start a club and I found out you had to be on the motorcycle set and sponsored by MC. So from that, just being around them, it was some, I had a guy drop me while I was on the back and got busted up. After that, I was like, I'll never give another big chance to drop me. So I ride my own school, you know. Right. I still enjoy backpacking though, know, but I'm a little more about whose bike I'll get on the back of, that's for sure. Okay. Really? Wow. So, wow. You, you didn't get hurt when you get dropped, did you? Were you okay? Heck yeah, I got hurt. Oh, you got hurt. Oh, it was a big drop. Okay. All right. That's my little cute jeans. Oh, no. Man, my... <laughs> <laughs> you okay. Okay. Okay, Taboo? You can say it, Mark. I was introduced to motorcycle when young. And you can see that in one of the YouTube episodes or my YouTube episode on the Raven Dixie line. But um, I started riding when I was 32, which was in 2013, April of 13. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been riding for seven years. Um, I, people ask me all the time why I ride motorcycles. And I tell people like, you know, oh, it's therapeutic, but it really is like, so I don't kill people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Like it controls my mood and my temper. Like I figure things out when I'm riding my bike. So I'm less frustrated when I get off. You yeah. know, there's less conflict in my life. Yeah. Um, so seven years, don't plan on stop riding. I get good at it. I get worse. I get good. You know, there's ups and downs. And yeah, I'm going to keep on riding. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love it. She so like through the ups and downs, it's, it's my therapy. Right. Yes. And for, for all of you that don't know, the listeners that are listening right now, they have their first four introductory episodes that are on YouTube under the Raven Dixie line. And we have to apologize to Win Dixie. We always butcher you. I know she go by Win Dixie. You be like, it's Raven Dixie. And I just be she like, yeah. Names, man. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. Win Dixie. Here, here's the apology. I, I apologize tremendously right now. But if you go onto her YouTube, which is the Raven Dixie line, you can catch the first four introductory episodes to, and it introduces each one of these lovely ladies that we have here in front of us right now. So check that out for sure. So go ahead, Ebony, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I did not grow up around motorcycles. Um, I didn't start hanging out. I did go to a motorcycle club in Detroit at 17 and I realized that I wanted to ride but then life got the best of me and I've been on many many years and so um 
2016, I decided to buy me a bike and start riding. And I went to the Hardy Davidsons. They taught me how to ride, and I've been riding ever since. You got your bike overseas, didn't you? I did. I didn't um, know anything about motorcycles. I just said, let me go buy one, because I'm... I, if I buy it now, I'm gonna make sure I know how to ride. <laughs> and that, I did. <laughs> that's bullshit. You buy you buy your shit overseas. Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna get to it when I get to it. <laughs> well, I, got it though. I got it. I got it. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So you're from the D, Ebony. I am. I'm from the D. Are you from the D or are you just from Michigan? I'm just from Michigan. Man. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. All from, right. Much love. Saginaw, Bay yeah. <laughs> so but all of you reside in Texas right now, correct? Correct. Yes. So yes. They are the Texas chapter for the listeners. Okay, you can check them out. Like I said, on YouTube. Um, so what what's in it for the future, you guys? After these four episodes, you know, what are you going to show us next? Where, where are you going to take us in this virtual <laughs> digital ride you're putting us on? So let's look at how we take it. Tell us about our next venture. Said it again, Socks. I said, let's let Taboo you, you tell us who? about our next okay, venture. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Taboo. Me? Yes. Uh, well, we are riding from Texas. Um, pretty much anywhere in Texas, anywhere the ladies want to come. And we're riding to St. Louis, Missouri, Labor Day weekend. September 4th through the 6th. We are riding in the name of Sickle Cell Anemia um, for the Texas All-Female Ride. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so we are um, joining up and we're actually, because of COVID, we have joined up with two other rides. And the other two other rides are the Mid-South All-Female Cancer Ride and the Ride for Hope um, All-Female Ride. And that's breast cancer awareness. And so so we go, I tell all the ladies, I'm telling everybody, document your trip there. Yeah, we can get there and have a good time. But the what, what the fem tells of bike life, those are those trips, you know, you know, those gas stops. Those are those miles you hit. And those are those conversations you have with your sisters or by yourself if you're riding by yourself when you get there and when you get home. We have ladies, I mean, big timers that run all across this country that, a lot of us aspire to be like, and so a lot of them are going to be there. So it's really going to be a good time for women in motorcycling to, you know, just mingle and have a damn good time. We riding our bikes there and we ride them out. Everybody. Nice. Nice. Yeah, have you ever been on a ride? You ever? No, nah, I've never been invited. To really? On a whole ride. I, I, had a, I had a bike for a little bit. I didn't I didn't get to go on any rides. I, I learned to ride it and then I will I watched somebody go down and I parked it, bro. Yeah. <laughs> I parked it. Oh, that <laughs> can happen? Yeah, I'm gonna go for here. Yeah. <laughs> it was the SpongeBob, like, all right, and I'm gonna head out. Yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> head out. Yeah. <laughs> so these ladies are brave, you know? These are brave, uh, brave are, ladies. Are any of y'all part of, uh, like, Phoenix mentioned she went to start a club. Are any of y'all a part of, like, clubs or is, like, the Fem Tales, is that, like, its own club in itself? Like, or y'all, like, the closest I have is Sons of Anarchy Knowledge, so help me out. You have to say who you want to answer the question. I'm so sorry. How about, how about, <laughs> yeah. you, how about you answer? Uh, well, I am in a club, a uh, Lady Luck Riding Club. We just switched over from Social Club to Riding Club. No, Femtails is not a club. It's a group of like-minded individuals, ladies, that happen to ride their shit, you know? Mm -hmm. We all our sisters on iron. We call ourselves our win sisters, you know. So uh no, we're not a club. I'm in a club, taboo is a part of a club, and the ladies, um, Ebony and Sox are um independent riders right now. So that answers it. <laughs> so, taboo, are you part of the uh, <laughs> club also? Oh, it's a whole different club. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're coming from from four different walks. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, I figured since they all in like yeah, the same like, area. What was the question? Um, what club are you a, a part of? <laughs> oh. I was going to see if she was going to answer it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. I can. 
here to get messed up. No, um, I support a club. Let's just say that. They have rules, I'm a Brandon. Supporter they, of a motorcycle. They can't always um, dis- disclose everything. With uh-huh. It's a whole. It's a whole culture. No, I, I get the culture part. I watch Sons of Anarchy. I was just oh, no, that's not. That's not at all. Don't do that. Don't do that. I'm, I'm gonna do it. That's all I got for you. That's what I know. That's all he got. That's all I got. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I apologize <laughs> for my friend. Uh, yeah. I'm I'm purely inquisitive right now. Like this is all curiosity. Yeah, and that's for the listeners that don't know. A lot of a lot of stuff I know. I know. Say that again. Phoenix sipping tea. The Phoenix, she halfway through. Be like, look at her. Yeah. Oh, let's go. What you say? I got a whole plate sitting here. I'm waiting to smash. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, I've seen you. You get ready, got ready with right the mic here, girl. Girl. Like, as soon as we get through this, I'm gonna make sure mine already cut. Uh, uh-huh. <laughs> she she paused in the camera, taking bites in between cuts. You know? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> look, she gonna lean on. No, no <laughs> so, Evan, he got a burger. <laughs> what is it? What is it? I just got, got water and uh, one not, not, one you, bite it. It <laughs> you said you got water and what? And tequila. Mess. I don't have no food. I already ate. Tequila. That's oh, all. Yeah, I ate already. And agave. What's up? You you drink silver or gold? I like uh, gold. Okay, Shade. I can rock with you. <laughs> all right. I got whiskey. Whiskey. In, in your coffee cup, girl. We said five in the afternoon. Huh? <laughs> said it's about that time. Yeah, about that time. <laughs> so um, working with you guys has been super interesting and, and trying to learn and and adapt to each one. And I have to do it through footage. Like I said, I've never met these ladies. So beyond what people see, on the YouTube videos and on the television clips and such, what is something that they're not going to be able to figure out from the TV? Get, let them know a little bit something beyond just the introductory episode. And I'm gonna start with Ebony. We're gonna go to Phoenix, Taboo, then Socks. Um, I'm a sucker for animals. I love my two fur babies to death. I'm I'm a dog person myself. Dog, yeah, yeah. Is it her fur babies are the dogs. Yeah, I thought it was yeah. Good. Here's one them? of them right here. Uh oh, look, look, look. Oh, <laughs> he's oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my big one. She's the three year old, and then I have a um, five month old in the living room. Okay, that's what yeah. I'm... Wow. And then what do we say? Do we say Phoenix next? Yes. Mm-hmm. Phoenix. Um, I can honestly say like my whole life on the show. So this is what I do every day. I don't have no filter at all. Like if it's some something going down, it's it's something going down. You know, I, I don't have no filter as as to anything I'm willing to talk about or anything. So I'm just my life out there. So right. Right. What about you, Taboo? Um, I'm kind of like Phoenix. This is me every day. So there is no separation. Um, a lot of people, when they first meet me, I guess they never really get to see the, the my tails, the softer side of who I am. And so well, I remember this young lady um, asked me, you know, was talking shit or whatever. Not like bad shit. You know, we were sitting there rapping about biking. And I was like, well, I'm heartless. I ain't got no uh, feelings. The only thing I love is my motorcycle. And so for me, there is no separation. This is what I know saved my life. And so that's why I'm so passionate about motorcycle and women that get involved with it. Men too. Like, yeah, it's cute or looks fun but this is first off dangerous you know secondly you know you may not come back to your family or you may not come back home the way that you left so you know being safe about riding but as well turn up and have a damn good time and be yourself so that's what's beyond 
<laughs> you gonna see how we turn up. <laughs> Miss Socks, how about you? Wow. I don't know. I think I'd be a little camera shy sometimes. So maybe my personality doesn't come out as much on film. So in person, I'm probably a lot more personable. I think I don't, I could be wrong, but I think I'm probably a little bit more talkative. Some I don't know though, because some people, you know, will say I'm always quiet, and then other people will be like, the girl never stops talking. So it just depends on. <laughs> you. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> who, who the fuck you are, and if I want to deal with you or not. That <laughs> too. That too. But, and everybody gets more talkative after about three shots of tequila. So yeah, you I'm, know that's why I had it going before we went live. That, that, <laughs> I understand. Wow. Um, and I've I've seen both sides of side. I could see I could see both sides of what you're saying because when I was going going through the footage with her and stuff like that, like. There was times like at the brunch, she was wide open. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, but then she, they had a scene, I think it was at the Drip Girls party where she's on her bike with her phone and you know what I mean? She's doing this and that. And I was like, oh, she's feeling herself right now. Yeah. <laughs> so. And she was recording at that point. It's okay. You know what? That was a great shot. That was cool. So, have all of y'all like went down, like drop before, like on your own, like falling off the bike, like crash? Or yeah, what's the, what's the advice for what's the capacity? Yeah. Because when you said you might not come back the way you left, I'm, I'm like, I'm curious now, like, what's like the worst, like, like situation? Like, my brother lost his kneecap on a bike. So, I, is there anything like that, like, where y'all was like, yeah, I did not come home the way I left? I have oh. not. And, and it makes me a little nervous because they always say there's two riders, those that's been down and those that's going down. And so I just, you know, wish and hope and pray that when that day comes, I'm fully clothed because sometimes I'm not on my bike <laughs> and yeah. that I am, you know, able to get back up and keep going. All right. Taboo, you just took your shot. Look like you had a flashback. Well, what what you have been through? <laughs> um, I'll make it quick. I've not been down to the capacity of like really hurting myself. It's more so like bumps and bruises. Um, I was riding somewhere and, you know, when I first started riding, I think it was within the first few months and I went down and, I, you know, the scar is almost gone now, but I kind of slid. So not to the point where I've like been hit by a car or if I've tumbled or, you know, something to that capacity. So, and it's crazy because my mother, like she started calling me and I'm like, if she don't leave me alone, I'm trying to pull it together. We got, we was only two houses from where we was going. I was just startled and I was a newer rider. And so she kept it like, I put it on Facebook, I think like maybe 20 minutes later and she kept calling. I'm like, why are you calling me? Well, she felt me go down. So I believe if I was to ever something like that happened, my mama would know. That's what's up. Dude, what advice taboo? would you have to to riders that have went down that are maybe scared to get back on or you know something something encouraging you could tell people that you know or maybe those who haven't like a socks that hasn't been down that something you could tell her as encouragement they better play that Donnie McKirkland we fall down <laughs> <laughs> but we get up um, right. <laughs> as far as a rider that hasn't been down just make sure when you do like it don't be concerned about, oh, did I learn this or did I learn whatever? Just make sure, you know, you're prepared to react in the way you're supposed to. Um, it's funny because Socks don't know, I've seen a video of her swerving to oh, miss. Oh, honey, that near miss was, I was this close. When yeah. I say this close, I'm talking about this close. Yeah. A car turned out in front of me and Ebony happened to be recording on her phone mount, um, mm -hmm. on her handlebars and it, I almost did not make it home in a major way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but she handled that bike, and that was like, mm -hmm. okay, at least that instinct kicked in. Like she knew what to do to, you know, avoid the situation. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as someone who has not ridden before, or I'm mean, assuming who's been down and is a concern about getting on their bike, um, really, you you just got to figure out if what well, if it really is for you. And for riders who have been down and they get back on, 
to the point where they may have been hospitalized or had surgery, if motorcycling really was just, is for them, for people that did not, I can't say that, oh, well, it was so bad that you don't want to get back on. It really wasn't for you. Some people physically can't take that pain anymore because it damaged their body so much. Right. But for those- Her paranoia, that, mentally. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, yeah. <laughs> That'll really get to people too. The mental health is some stuff we really don't talk about, but that really is a big deal as well in motorcycling. I know for me, it's therapy, but having some traumatic experience like that, how do you get over that? So in my opinion, you know, just you got to get back in it. You got to get back on it. Even if you don't want to or you don't think really more so you don't think you can. Like, right. that's what you got to get past. Okay. Yeah, get to it. Ebony, have you have, have you went down before? I have. Um, I think I, I was only riding for three days. Damn. And so my third day riding. And uh, it was nighttime. I was in Houston and I was coming across this curve. I mean, I was going around this curve and I didn't fully understand to use both brakes, the front and back brakes. And I used my uh, front brake and I slid on my left side into this ditch. The ditch was full of uh, water and tires. And uh, thank God I had a full helmet on because my head hit against the concrete. Mm. And I just low crawled it out that, uh, out that ditch because I was... All I can remember is just low crawling real fast. I'm thinking like that thing may, the uh, motorcycle may blow up or something. So, hey. And um, so, yeah, I got up. Everything went right. And uh, my whole thigh was swollen. My left hand was swollen. And just so happened the next day, I was flying out to go back overseas. <laughs> so I had to fake the test. And everything to pass the physical. I was trying to act like I wasn't hurting or nothing. Mm -hmm. And I'm in class doing training. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm in pain. Mm -hmm. But I ended up passing and then went overseas. Yes, she's a soldier. She she had the military crawl right out of the gate. I did. That's exactly what I did. I did. That's exactly what I did. Right, right, right. I but I was uh, I was happy to get back on. Like uh how many years wow. did you serve, Ebony? Eleven years. Eleven years. Uh -huh. uh, and you were uh, you were deployed how many times? Uh, three times overseas, five. Okay, see, so listeners, even supporting these ladies with riding, go support Ebony. She is a soldier. She has served her country. Did yeah. any, anyone else? Did any anyone else serve? No? no. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we'll go support yeah. Ebony. Yes, Ebony. Yes, she <laughs> served her country also. So thank you. So where do we go? We got who we got still got to tell us about her time when she went down. Okay. Well, I fell twice. Uh, my first time was about a year into my ride, and I was getting off work at UPS at like three in the morning, and somebody was trying to turn up in a bathhouse and stopped right in front of me. <laughs> oh. So it was either lay the bike down or run into the side of an Avenger. So I decided to, I knew if I laid it down, I'd be okay. I took a tumble. Then mm -hmm. I called one of my club brothers at the time and he came out there and checked my bike. And then he was, I told him I had to get back on it. Cause if not, I, I probably would have never rode again after that. Cause yeah. it make your adrenaline rush. It's just, it's, it's too much, you know, but I ended up riding my bike home uh, that night or whatever. And then about two years ago, um, I had an accident coming back from uh, Houston with Second Motorcycle Club. If you know them, you know them boys ride hard. Uh, <laughs> we were coming off an of S-shaped exit and um, slowing down to a stop sign. And I kind of came off the pavement a little bit and hit the dirt. And, roll through the dirt as much as I could, but then uh, I was big like boulders out there and my bike hit one of them and it, I took a tumble. I hurt myself real bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were in Centerville, Texas and I didn't know what to do. Like the guys picked me up and made me go clean myself up. I had blood down. Um, I got road rash on both sides of uh, my hips. I was not properly dressed. It was 107 <laughs> degrees outside. I had on tights and a wife beater. Ooh. You know, luckily I had my vest on. 
Yeah, but that's, I'm so glad I had that on. I had on a full face helmet, but I messed up my rotator cuff and still had to, my hand went numb. I still had to ride my bike home from Centerville, mm. Texas. Okay. And I thought that second and none would have raised up on me. You know, like, hey, she just fell. Let's slow the pack down. Uh, no, no, <laughs> no they don't the block do that. Block down. With me at the back, I was the only girl who invited myself on their ride. So I learned mm. a valuable lesson then to stick with my win sisters, even though I am a, a good rider. I need to ride my own ride. That's what I learned <laughs> most about that fall. So. Not that ride. <laughs> and if people have never if you've right. never seen a rider with the road rash, especially African Americans. <laughs> It Ooh. looks awful when that road yeah. rash hits. I've I've got a couple of guys yes. man, uh, that have got it on their shoulders and their arms, and who I don't I don't wish that on my enemy ever. That looks terrible. The healing is worse, like especially when it's on parts of your body that bend. That scab don't bend, and it crack every time you bend your elbow, your anything. It's horrible, yeah. horrible. So let's. Let's spin on a little bit more positive note here. I'm ready. I'm ready to get away from the road rash. That guy, he's <laughs> at all. <laughs> right. Right. I'm covered in tattoos. I get road rash. I got. I got a thousand dollars messed up. Right. You got a whole <laughs> another set of sessions coming to fix that. I can't afford this. Wow. Wow. Um. I so see, I see you, Taboo. You didn't. You didn't have to take some marks on. Uh, oh no, that's that's my wild side. So I got a road rash um, tattoo. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. it's got a little you cheetah. Thanks. <laughs> 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 no, I'm honest with myself. Man. Motorcycling is dangerous, so you got to be smart about how you you know you maintenance your bike or the things you ingest in your body. So, food included, medicine also. So. So gotta be hmm? socks. A lot of people that that aren't affiliated with the uh, the biker world and community, they don't realize the type of like fundraisers and things they do for the community, the drives and stuff. You know, they all just think it's just parties and what they see on TV. Mm -hmm. um, are the femtail girls? Are y'all gonna be participating in any sort of? fundraisers or events to help other fundraisers or anything you would like to plug for the community? Absolutely. We're open. Um, just yesterday we had um, uh, some conflicting events, of course, but we, a couple of us were at a daycare that one of my friends opened for children with autism. And we um, had little kids taking pictures on motorcycles and mm -hmm. we were there for that cause. It was a beautiful um, day, but anything, you know, the community has going on, they're welcome to send it to us. If we're able to make it, we're definitely going to attend, you know, the Texas all female ride that we have going on is for a good cause as well. I think we all individually have, you know, things that we are passionate about that we uh -huh. have no problem fundraising and supporting. Okay. That's a beautiful cause. But I do want to highlight uh, how how great that is to have a daycare for children with autism, yeah. with autism being um, such a prevalent thing now. Right. Uh, with, you know, running for councilman and all that. Here, where we are located, that there is no daycare, and I've actually been looking into that, trying to figure out how to get petitions to to do a daycare for children with special needs that are still functioning, like like autism. So that that's that really gave me like a nice little inspiration that to know that it's already a thing to know that that's already mm -hmm. that's that's great that's great right that's wonderful where is the daycare oh they're oh, in texas yeah, they're in Patricia. Texas. yeah. Tennessee in audience, Texas. texas yeah the tennessee audience here is is combining with the texas audience they're like where's this daycare at right yeah we from dallas right. real sound tells the bike life dallas version right so, so yeah um any I've, other charities though that uh, before we or events up? like yeah like oh yeah um but like I said we're supporting sickle cell awareness uh, with the Texas All Female Ride for Labor Day weekend we're actually like I said it's called the All Female Unity Ride so it's combined um, rides that are coming together but we're supporting the Sickle Cell Association of Texas the Mark Thomas Foundation and so you are able to donate 
towards our miles. We'll be putting that information out on our Facebook page to, at the Texas All Female Ride. Um, we FEMS will actually be going to Longhorn Harley Davidson on August 29th. Well, I think we've decided on 12 to three on that day to go and they're gonna set up a tent and, you know, excuse me, we're gonna, set, Harley's gonna set it up for us because we're not about to do that kind of hard work, but we showing up and being cute and talking about these bikes. Um, yeah. <laughs> and so, and then, like I said, the next week, text, um, all female year to ride. And then I know we're still going to Galveston in November uh, with the real film, or excuse me, with the Raven Dixie line. So that will be November 5th through the 8th, I believe. Um, Lone Star Rally got canceled, but we still going. Right. We still have a damn good time. Yeah. Yeah. Turn up. Turn up. Yes. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Nice. Um, I'm sorry to cut you off. I knew you were about to switch it up, so I just wanted to hear some more. Oh, no, no. It's okay. It's yeah. all right. So other than these ladies just being writers and, and, and um, you know, in their clubs, they're also reality stars. You know, reality stars. They're also entrepreneurs of their own. So, mm -hmm. um, oh, y'all got businesses? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. The entrepreneurs, they're just not pretty faces and shiny bikes, man. These are hey, them bikes are not cheap now. You gotta, you gotta uh, figure out how you gonna maintenance it and put gas in it and trips are not cheap. And no, they're not. if you want to upgrade anything, <laughs> yeah, you need to have something coming in. Right, yeah. right. So, um, Socks, go ahead. Uh, what, what do you do? I am a realtor and I own a real estate investment company that is slowly moving along because I have not been very motivated this year. Of course, I don't know who has in this pandemic, but I am a realtor and I'm very passionate about putting um, families and homes, in particular my African-American community, but I, that's what I do. I put people in, in places to live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Let's go to Phoenix. I, I know a little bit about Phoenix's business. Well, um, I have a helmet accessory business. I do helmet ponytails. Hold on, hold on, I got one. Uh -oh, got she's one. going to get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Look, my helmet is right here. Hello, you man. know, I do uh, ponytails and decals to uh, for helmets to increase your visibility on the road. You know, you want people to know you're a lady rider. Right. So they'll let you over. <laughs> but uh, besides that, I can do any kind of any kind of little hair or whatever you want to do. I do uh, blinking them out. I rhinestone everything. So I do a little bit of some of this, some of that. I do state inspections down here in Texas. So where can they find that too? Find that on Facebook or wherever you may be. Um, you can on Facebook, you can look up Harley P's Customs. And um, on there, my website's on there through uh, Squarespace to be able to order. So uh, hit me up. Yes. Okay. Uh, Taboo? Well, I have Taboo Black Ink, which I actually have a shirt on right now. I made sure just for this cause. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would somewhat model that. Um, but you can find us on Instagram and Facebook, T-A-B-U, Taboo Black Ink. And so we have a motorcycle clothing apparel line um, for the lady riders. We have some male pieces as well, like the joggers, um, the shorts, the booty shorts are not. Those are for us. That's <laughs> both male. You mean um, I can't get my booty, booty shorts on, Taboo? No, no, no. But that's for when I can take these jeans off because I know it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need to see none of that. <laughs> yeah, those are for me. Wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Uh, Ebony, I am. I do not have my own business. You're However, soldier, soldier for hire. You want if you You're want right. a sexy bodyguard biker? Yeah, hire Ebony stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> biker escort. Uh, I am currently in in college, working on my bachelor's in business degree. Okay, and I'm also. I'm uh, working on getting licensed to be a freight broker okay. so I can have my own little business going on. Hey, girl. Hey, that's, where it starts, though. Yeah. that's how it all starts. I like that. I like that. Right. They all doing their own thing. Man, that's cool. Yeah. 
man, fellas that are listening, I hope y'all got businesses because in this past month, I've been exposed to about 25 female entrepreneurs that are kicking ass. Yep. So, <laughs> we did yeah. we did a um what was it about two weeks ago? We, we did, did the, uh, a special for black female entrepreneurs. And uh, that was the one that uh, Win Dixie was on. And then we had uh, the a woman who's doing like a digital uh, workout. Fitness. Yeah, workout where you can like digitally go in and meet with your trainer via FaceTime. And then they, they upload your workout plan. Yeah, your workout plans yeah. and such like that. So uh, your, your, your uh, diet regimen for the week and everything like that. Yeah, it's really we went to the uh, black owned business pop up shop uh, that we had down here where it was just all different types of entrepreneurs and i think 90 percent of them were, were women yeah women. yeah and oh, uh, uh, yeah. That's yeah actually yeah. august is national black business month i think i saw that hey, what? Early. yeah august <laughs> oh why- yeah. what a oh and it's money month on the who that podcast Support black <laughs> businesses all this month. Thank you, tabooblackink.com. Yeah, there Come is. on. <laughs> I had no yeah. idea. There it yeah. is. <laughs> I saw it on Facebook this morning. And so when y'all said, I'm like, wait a minute, I think that's this month. Yeah, it is. Black business month. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Mm. So look, y'all, now y'all got something every August, huh? Yeah. Oh, this. <laughs> Do it for the another Juneteenth for me. What you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. So, so when when you guys start visiting these cities and these fans start rolling in, what is your drink of choice for them to purchase when they see you and they're gonna buy you that drink? Socks go. Tequila. Tequila. Phoenix go. Vodka. Vodka. Oh, wait, wait. What kind of vodka? Just just vodka. Or you gotta. Um, uh, long as it ain't a whale. Well. Okay. Okay. Uh taboo, go. Uh Jack Daniels on the rocks. Not not none of those nice. real if not um no. jello shots, none of those. No. <laughs> Jack Daniels on the rocks. Okay. <laughs> Ebony. Preferably, go. but preferably Apple gentlemen. Crown. Apple Crown. I got that at the house. I she from Detroit. That. That's, that's Yo, Detroit. That's I Detroit. Swear. All right. That's Detroit, they be making whole suits out of Crown Royal bags and shit. You know? <laughs> What's oh, that, wow. velvet? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> what is wow. that? Wow. No. And now they got the different colors, so now they're really pimping. You know? Oh, yeah. It ain't Green. purple no more. Oh, my God. <laughs> mm. Mm. Wow. She mm-hmm. from Detroit. I bet her whole biker vest made out of gator skin. Gator skin, yeah. <laughs> Look, she be dressing cute, have all her little shit core and accessories and everything. Wow, well, okay, right? Y'all, okay. y'all addressed on the show that it, it takes her a little while to get there. What, what does it take her? You said she doesn't wear makeup, but it still takes her forever to get ready. At <laughs> least an hour. It's going to be at least put on all them accessories. That's why. Yeah. <laughs> I said when I was editing, I, I looked, I looked to win. I said, she doesn't wear makeup, but it takes her forever to get ready. You know, what I, mean? <laughs> I didn't understand that. You know, so, we don't understand either. It's okay. Yeah. We love her. We, we we're gonna hire people just to run in and dress her real quick. She's just gonna have to stand like this, and they just <laughs> no makeup. It doesn't matter. Just just put it on. Put it on. <laughs> right. Take a phone away. <laughs> oh, it's the phone. It's the phone. Now we get into the root. We get into the root now. Uh oh. He be busy. I mean, we gotta leave in an hour. Put your phone on the table. Airplane. Okay. Airplane. Right. <laughs> exactly. That's what we gonna have to do. We have to tell when that. <laughs> they gave me phone. They they tell me uh, at least a half an hour ahead of time. Yeah, you you one of the people got to lie to. Event starts at five thirty. We gotta get ready at two. Okay. You know. <laughs> I, I don't know why I be late to. I think it's because um, as long as I spent in the army, boy, 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 I could not stand getting up early, and I had to. So when I got out, it was like, shoot, I do whatever I want to do. You, flex, you don't have to flex on everybody, Ebony. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's a, I feel I'm still trying to work on the mornings too. He already know if this if it's before 10 a.m. Don't count me in. Yeah, <laughs> I, I lie to him all the time. Hey, bro, I need you here at like four, and then we gotta be with with win at eight. You know what I mean? So, I, get, I get here at like three thirty. 
And then we just chilling like, man, I'm just making shoes on time, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always late too now, just not as late as Ebony. I really? I'm going to be about 10, 15 minutes late. Everything's going to be about 30 to 45 minutes late. That's, yeah. That surprises me so much. Number one, because Ebony is in the military. And number two, Socks, you just seem like you, you know, you just got it all. Like everything would just be just so planned. And that's just from me watching the show. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Not I, at really, all. I really expected Phoenix and Taboo to be late. I'm be honest with you. <laughs> I'm, be honest. If I I'm the one that's not late. I show up. Taboo's always, always early. Early. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Taboo's eyebrows. You say the shit. Her eyebrows went up like, nigga, please. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Take look, it back. I, Take it back. Late, so I pull up and just start chilling. Like, let me just pull up and sit here and wait. They'll yeah. be here. Okay. Hi, but Phoenix, she usually just meets you there. <laughs> so. so, um, from watching the show, uh, Taboo, I'm gonna ask this, and hopefully, you know, this isn't out there. Anything? But how, how is Bay? <laughs> she makes the appearance. How is Bay? Oh, uh, Bay is uh, at work right now. Oh, don't be doing that. Bay is good. Um, she's. I love she's, her. I'm gonna be honest. She's emotional today. Oh, no. I'm gonna tell the world so that way when she posting this week on Facebook, it is I am not the root cause. So her grandfather, who was a very big influence in her life, today's the day he died. Okay. So Bay has been on 200 for the last three weeks, but make me yeah. So it's be I'm gonna be nice to her for the next two three days. Okay, well tell Bay hey. who that podcast sends their love and condolences okay. and to keep the chin up. Oh yeah, she'll be okay. She'll be. She yeah. just said. Okay. And then it'll be Wednesday, and she'll be okay. Right. <laughs> I consider her. She's like the the uncasted cast member. You know what I mean? <laughs> she, she be there. She there. You know what I mean? Hey, like, everywhere. So I got to um, at least give her, you know, a little five minute. Hey, how's Bay? You know. <laughs> <Shout out. laughs> yeah. so, do the rest of your days? <laughs> they make appearances. Uh, make appearances. I haven't seen anybody else's uh-huh. bay. I think Ebony's gets a phone bay, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh-huh. But I guess start out Start out with uh, who? Pick uh, one. Socks. Do you, do, do you have a bay? I do not have a bay. Single right. socks. Hey, it's it's, it's kind of hard to keep up with socks. So, I you mean. get friend requests from people in Tennessee. You're welcome. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's you on a, I you said you ain't had no bank. Uh, trying to see you on a nigga with some goals in his mouth. So, uh, Phoenix, you got a bay? Um, no, I actually named Bay Bay. So, that's <laughs> she's in my club. So that's. That's the only bay I ever have. You know, <laughs> me like socks, I'm hard to keep up with. So I need a man that ride, and I haven't found one yet that, you know, we have to uh, have an understanding, you know. <laughs> but I'm looking, though. Holla at your girl. Holla at your girl. Where, 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 Ashley said, did you, did you message them? I said, I ain't messaged them like that. I don't ride. So I ain't right. got nothing for them. So I ain't, I ain't even jump in anybody's DMs. Yes, <laughs> actually, on um, Raven Dixie Line, um, I did an interview with her a while back, about nine months ago, about dating on the motorcycle set. So if you want to know why I'm single, you could listen to that and you get a good idea. They can find that on YouTube under uh, Raven Dixie Line. I did an interview too. <laughs> it's called Dating and Motorcycle Clubs Open Relation. I, I'm in, I'm in an open relationship. Beautiful. So. All right, you going hard with it. And how's that? No, going? no, I'm just honest with everybody and myself. This is what I do, and you can be here. Or you can. Is it going good? Is this, this working? Is what going good? Is it going good for me? Yeah, for you. Um. It has its challenges because I'm on the yeah, same thing. Like, like riding a bike. It's just... Yeah, yeah, it's up. Yeah, but I'm I'm okay with me. <laughs> yeah, and that's all that matters. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the only thing that's gonna matter. So, yep. absolutely, absolutely. 
I don't rock with taboo. I'm trying not to cuss. <laughs> <laughs> what you want to know? Look, come on, let's do some tales. What you want to know? Hold on, hold on. We 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 we're gonna have to come back to that. Ev- Evening, you got a bag? <laughs> I do. <laughs> you know she did. As I told you. <laughs> That's home bay. I show I show man in the to the film tales. He said, "Who is that?" Said, that's, that's Ebony Star. He said, "Oh, I said, but she got a bay. He be in her phone all day. <laughs> it's all good. It's all uh, right." So, um, he don't hold shit back, man. I don't. I'm transparent. <laughs> I can tell your business. Oh, I mean. Right, Phone Bay. That's his name, Phone Bay. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> so I, I don't know. I believe that. Uh, and that's why I can never be a part of any organization, I think, because the level of transparency I'm going to give you is, you know, I mean, people are like, you just tell them, I'm like, no, it's just transparent. It's just honesty. And it's easier for me to live my life and for yeah. us to have our relationship that way, you know, it makes it impossible. It should be that way. Yeah, it should be. It, it would avoid so much conflict that people Absolutely. Feel if they yeah. were. Be- no, and you can either deal with it and you know move on about your your life or you could not but either way you have to respect the truth yeah Yeah. say that you didn't know there's no surprises when you put it all out there then you avoid those crazy situations most things are laughable if you just just put it out there and most of the time if even if it's kind of a conflict you can just laugh about it you know me as a photographer i deal with people all the time. Like I might take a picture of a woman, do a photo shoot of a woman, and then later, a year later, get contacted by somebody they're dating and, oh, you took these pictures of her. And da, 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 da. <laughs> all that shit. But most of the time, I'm just super transparent with them, you know? I tell them, like, bro, it is what it is. Here, here's where I am. I took the pictures. If you can't accept that, i see you in an hour. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, it is what it is. I pull up. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. I'm not going to sit here and argue about a woman that I'm not sleeping with. So exactly. Right. I refuse. I refuse. I it. refuse it. There's a few right. things in life you got to compromise to to be able, but that's the one I'm not no. no. I'm not arguing with anything <laughs> that is not mine. I'm sorry. Like no. Right on. I, I get I get uh I don't want to say approach because it's all digital, but you know, you get contact the same way and right. they, and it was like, yeah man, I ain't like the fact that she, you know, was taking pictures and and getting and showing herself like that, I, bro. If she didn't talk to you about it first, I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I know I got paid, so yeah, that's yeah. the part that I came for. Right, right. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. so um, since we're talking about conflict for a minute, um, each one of you guys, could you uh, give give the world a little advice about how to deal with conflict? You know, I mean, how do you deal with your conflicts? And we'll start. Let's start with we'll start with Ebony. We'll go taboo. We'll go Phoenix. Then we'll go socks. Look, Ebony, she can't even. Eat. Eat. She got her man too. You know what? <laughs> taboo, go ahead, taboo. We'll come back. We we'll let you swallow uh, that, that porterhouse. <laughs> uh, right. Bone over here. Right. <laughs> Honestly, you have to face conflicts head on, or you just let that shit die down. It really comes down to, for me, if it's worth what it is that I'm going to be doing. If it's going to jeopardize, you know, the things that I love, then I'm not going to, you know, deal with any situations that put me in that type of situation. So when it comes to, I ain't worried about what people say or may perceive. What they perceived about me a few years ago when I did move to Dallas is a way different perception of who they are really getting to know and who I've always been. So, you know, that can that created conflict for me in the beginning. It really just came down to they didn't know who I was. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You gotta get familiar. Yeah. Okay. Who do we say was going to next? Phoenix? Uh Ebony stopped chewing. Oh, you done eating Ebony? I'm done. <laughs> okay, go ahead, girl. <laughs> so I deal with conflict. Um I try to ignore it. I'm a peace peacekeeper. Um, I don't like conflict. I don't like drama. A lot of times when someone, when there's a, when I'm involved in something negative, mm-hmm. it's based on 
<clears throat> something that somebody said about me and I'd be like, I, it'd just be like, okay, I don't care. You know, hmm. um, did, did the military uh, teach you any, any, like, is this stuff you learned from your life or learned from being in the military? Well, for my life, my mother always told me growing up and it stuck with me. If somebody talk about you, it's because they jealous of you. And I just let, leave it like that. <laughs> so, um, but some of the conflicts I came across, um, I come across um, jealous females a lot. And um, he say, she say type stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, if I have to, if I'm partaking and participating in a conflict, it's because someone says something directly to me. So I'm going to let them have it. Right. But most of the time, if it's not like that, I just ignore it. You know, I don't engage it. You know, they can say whatever they want. I don't care. <laughs> right, right. Uh, they waste all that energy. That's on them. Right. Phoenix? Well, these days, I handle conflict way different than I used to, you know. Mm -hmm. Two assault charges later. And girl, <laughs> you girl, real calm now, you know. Um, only conflict I really uh, <laughs> only conflict I really come into these days is just um, you know women misunderstanding me. I am close with a lot of guys. Um, I kind of most of my friends are guys, and it's not even on no sexual tip. It's just you know I speak motorcycle fluently, so some women don't understand that that don't ride, don't mm. understand that that's you know. This is just making conversation, talking about bikes. It has nothing to do with me wanting any of these lames. Right. <laughs> but now I don't know. I don't. Ha I don't really have conflict. Everybody loved me, so mm -hmm. it, it's completely a, different now. Yeah. You're in a leadership role too. So does that change how you deal with things? Also, no. I was in a leadership role when I got in trouble, but. <laughs> <laughs> but just now I know like the consequence of uh, of not thinking things through and not handling hand like now I, I think I would better I'm better at leaving a situation without having to explain myself or you know anything like that nowadays like I, I just don't give a f you yeah. know so yeah. yeah we call that growth everybody one two three Growth. Growth. <laughs> there you go. Besides how do you handle conflict? I can't really see you in conflicts. You don't see I don't believe I believe it's not to me. All right. Well, I always say that drama is either invited or tolerated, and I don't do either. So I live a very peaceful life and I I believe in being good to people. And I know a lot of people say, Well, I'm gonna treat you how you treat me. I'm not that way. I'm going to treat you the way that I know to treat people. And if you are in a space where I'm not able to treat you in the standard that I normally treat people, I just won't be around you. Um, yeah. I don't believe in seeing, wishing ill on anyone. I don't because, you know, you might be having some stuff going on in your life that I don't understand and that's okay. I pride myself on being able to see things from other people's perspectives. So even if I don't agree with an action, I at least try and understand what made you come to that action or reaction. So I don't, you know, I don't really have any problems with anyone. I don't, I know a lot of people like to say they, people don't like them, they got haters. I don't believe I have um, haters like that. I don't, um, maybe there's some people that don't find me appealing and that's okay. I'm not, you know, everybody's cup of tea and I'm, I'm completely good with that. As long as they don't, you know, come messing with me and my piece, I'm good. So. Right. right. And the reason I bring this up is because generally when people think of reality, reality TV, it feeds off of drama. And right. this is not the case with what they're putting together here. Right. We're, we're looking for a positive spin and a, a show of light yes. onto to a show. You know what I mean? On, onto a culture. So I wanted, you know, I wanted people to hear it from themselves and how they deal with conflict. So they'll know, you know what I mean? This isn't that's good because like people like me who, you know, my only understanding of it is Sons of Anarchy. So right, anything right. that's not that seller. <laughs> 
people shooting while he riding down the street. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm just, <laughs> so with reality TV, I'm not a big fan of it because of loving hip hop and the stigma that it's right. It's given it, it, and they being, feed off of. Oh, it's, it's horrible. And it's and horrible. that's not this, you know, it's listeners. That's not that, if oh. I'm object, I think the reason for that is because the bike set is crazy as it can be um, for all four of us and I can say firsthand because I have personal relationships with each one of these ladies this is all a passion of ours this is all genuinely our life and what we do I've been a part of the bike world since I was 19 I'm 30 now that's my entire adult life so for me I don't want drama where I operate my my escape my therapy like I can't I can't see it you know what I mean like the highway is genuinely my sanctuary I say that a lot because it is. So I can't be on the road um, with people I don't interact well with. I can't, you know, function if I go to a place and I'm gonna have to deal with Susie over there. They got something to say. I can't do that. And I know that these other ladies are the same. So we don't have that for our show. You know, it's genuinely, let's show you what we got going on. There be some things that might be entertaining. It doesn't take all the drama to be entertaining. Right, right. I'm all with that. And I mean, we are also a part of the bike world and situations um, of conflict are handled the way that they're handled, but you do not call the police. Right. Uh, Hey, oh my goodness. Hold on. Let me give it. (laughs) There it is. And here's a. (laughs) Do not call the police. I'm I'm trying to ruin your night, not your life, okay? <laughs> and probably only just the next 10 minutes, and after that, we're going to go right back to partying. Like. Right. Do that. Mm-mm. Don't ruin okay. my life Ooh. because I spilled a drink. That team didn't win. You just keep going. Like, yeah, absolutely. I'm still out of town. <laughs> right. So um, with all of you guys being female riders, uh, just a quick advice for women that are interested. And I know you guys have answered this before, but I wanted to the message to be conveyed to our audience also. Just any quick advice for women that are trying to get into writing and, and need, you know what I mean? Maybe need the guidance or just that are curious about it. Because um, we do have some uh, some uh, female uh, bike clubs here. Right. That, like if y'all, from what y'all say, they actually have some a, a few different organizations they can reach out to to right. you know further their their desires if they have some. So we'll start with Ebony. We'll go Phoenix. We'll go Sox. Then we'll go Taboo. Um, the advice I would like to give to women who are interested in riding a motorcycle, um, I think um, one pick a, pick something that you're comfortable with. Don't um concern yourself. Um, if you gain the the big and baddest bike out there, you want to be comfortable with your bike. That's why my bike is the smartest one out the game. Because <laughs> uh, I'm real comfortable with it. I know how to maneuver it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, also, when you come on the set, just know that everybody is there to show love. Um, don't always look at things in a negative way. Um, be open to uh, know that you may get hugged. <laughs> a lot of people, we are huggers on a bike set. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, so, it's just, uh, you know, some people be coming in uptight. You know, it's not like that. It's it's, it's really just to show love to one another because we all have this like mind of loving motorcycles. So, okay. just be open and friendly. Try to be a little friendly. <laughs> not as friendly as I am. I'm always happy. So. Okay. <laughs> What we say, Phoenix next? Did you say Phoenix next? Let's go with it. Phoenix. I'm ready. Um, my advice would be to uh, first uh, find someone in your area uh, that you, you like on Facebook, there's plenty of groups of uh, Lady Bikers Texas is one down here that um, we usually share information and um, mentorship with. My advice would be to take the class take the class. The class will teach you stuff that your friend is not going to teach you. It's going to teach you mechanics and safety protocol and a whole lot of other stuff that your friend going to forget to tell you just trying to show you how to maneuver it. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, just get around some like-minded women that's riding 
it's plenty of them. All the ladies are helpful when it comes to riding. I don't know about the guys, but mm -hmm. with the ladies, everybody's encouraging. They want to see you do well on your scoop. So find a Facebook group or see what's going on in your area. I think you're in Tennessee, right? right. Yes. It's, I'm sure it's plenty of Tennessee lady biker groups <laughs> and that offer a mentorship program for you to get out and, you know, yeah. get comfortable on your bike. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Did you have something you need to say, Ebony? Were you raising your hand? No. Okay, all right, go ahead, Sox. <laughs> Ah, my advice is, girl, do that shit. If you want to get on the bike, get on the bike. For real. Because, you know, women, people tell us all the time what we can and can't do. And I'm not going to say, don't be real with yourself. If you're not very coordinated, that might not be the thing for you. <laughs> but <laughs> if you want to do it, just do it. Take the class, get a motorcycle. Um, the only way to get good at riding is to ride. So ride your shit. Get on your bike. Don't worry about, you know, what anyone has to say. Just just do what you feel is right. Huh? All right. All right. I like okay. that. Okay. Taboo? Um, along with Phoenix, taking a class is the first thing. But also understand with riding a motorcycle, that is separate than the motorcycle set. The motorcycle set is a community, a group of people who have a passion for motorcycling and choose to be in clubs. If right. you just want to get out and go ride a bike, then go do that. Like go, you know, figure out some challenges, some goals to better your motorcycle. If you want to ride a motorcycle on the motorcycle set, you for damn well sure better have a motorcycle. And you for damn well sure better ride your bike if you are a riding or a motorcycle club. And that goes for men and women. So what's the difference between just riding your bike and riding in a club, for those that don't know. You going to get a bike tomorrow and then just riding that bike is riding the bike. For people that want to join a club, get in a social network of people that are like-minded, then they join the motorcycle set at some way, shape, or form. I mean, you have social clubs, those are ladies that, and men, some men, that do not ride motorcycles, but they are also a part of the motorcycle set. I'm sorry if it's windy, y'all. It started. It looks like it's about to rain. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. raining real bad over here. Oh wow. We already had our rain. Yeah, we had our rain. Did we did we lose somebody? Is Phoenix gone? I think we lost. I think we lost. We'll see if she pops back up though. She's like, they taking too long. I'm about to eat this plate. Well, she she did. She got off to smash that plate. <laughs> <That's what> <laughs> <laughs> So, um, <laughs> ladies, it's been a real pleasure having y'all in here. I don't want to take up too much of your time or anything. Um, been very informational for those of us that don't know nothing. Like, right. I really appreciate that, clearing some things up for me. Socks, when can we see some new episodes? Well, we'll be filming at the um, Unity Ride in St. Louis the um, Labor Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And... Um, me and Ebony Starr are going to be going from St. Louis on up to Niagara Falls and we'll be overnighting in Nashville with uh, Win Dixie, not with her, but where she lives, um, on the way home. So we'll get plenty of content that whole stretch of those few days. So whenever you guys put that together, yeah, there'll be yeah. some episodes out. Right, right. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, yeah, also, as the Dixie After Dark on Thursdays, that's when each one of us will be going live at 9 p.m. on youtube.com slash Raven Dixie Line. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that, though. I'm bad. I know. That's you going live, girl. This is going to be interesting. I'm, yeah, I'm excited yeah. to see everybody. This is, this is the pregame right here. We're just warming <laughs> you up. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Let me see here. Well, all right, guys. Uh, any anything you want to say before before we end up uh, closing for the night? I do. Go ahead. We are open for sponsorships. Um, <laughs> sponsorships help us do what we do. So if you you know have a target of audience of women or bikers, um, let us know. Um, sponsorships doesn't always mean monetary um, things. You know, you can if you have a product that you want to 
you know, have us advertise or, you know, we like free stuff. So send us it and we'll review it and, and do some promoting for you. So we are open to sponsorships. So even yeah. to add to that, yeah, I will help do any 30 second commercials that you get for a sponsorship. So Thank you. let me know. And I will throw that together for you guys, audio and video. So, okay. So and the other hey. thing I almost forgot, we are casting for Real Femme Tales of Bike Life, Los Angeles and Memphis. So you <laughs> are ladies that rides a motorcycle. We want to hear from you. So send, uh, I'll, I'll put the information out on my social media again, and we'll make sure you all have the information to share. Um, but we are looking for some ladies, right? And I, I just thought about it the other day. I know we all ride Harleys here in Dallas, but we're not just looking for Harley riders. So if you ride a sport bike, send us your stuff and, and we can consider you for, for the cast for Los Angeles or Memphis. Okay. And when, is there any dates that you have for that, that you might want to, or any deadline dates to get that? Yes. To you? That um, video submission has to be in by August 31st. Okay. Mm. So everybody hears that August yes. 31st, if you're in Memphis or if you're in Los Angeles, you make sure. Days. Yeah, you have 15 days to get a video submission in. If you could, Socks, just drop the information in our comments to, okay. to submit that. That can be done at any time. That, it doesn't have to be right now. But um, just so if anybody sees this and they want to submit, that'd be great, you know? Well, good deal. Good deal, good deal. Ebony, Taboo, anybody, any anything you want to say before we go? Um, thank you for having us. Yeah, I, I really appreciate it. <laughs> okay, our pleasure. Thank y'all for coming on. Yes, very uh, much. Yeah, and yes, super. We, <laughs> Go we got super what? Y'all super real. Super I, I, real I, with I, it. Yeah, it. authentic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just be sure to follow each one of us on our social medias. I know when Dixie has our social media posted on the Raven Dixie line on Facebook and Instagram. So be sure to follow each and every one of us on Instagram, Facebook. I know a couple of the ladies are really big into Snapchat. Um, I'm 38 years old. I'm only <laughs> on Snapchat to watch the, the videos that they post. Right. Um, I don't care. I'm, I'm at the top of the millennials. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> all the things snapping is the knees <laughs> when we standing up, right? <laughs> yeah, like I don't need all that, but I like yep. the videos. In the following on Snapchat, so but they yeah. talk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on any of those um, social media platforms, if you type in hashtag RD Femtails, you'll be able to see a ton of our stuff. We hashtag away, so all our pictures, videos, you can follow us from a couple months back. So, okay, and that's RD Femtails. I'm putting it in the yes. comments right now. That's their hashtag. That's where you'll be able to find them. So, um, you got anything for him before we go? Um, running for city council. Uh, sorry, I wasn't able to make it to the town hall meeting. It was my mom's birthday, and I had to go to a funeral. Uh, shout out to everybody that reached out to me. Uh, November 3rd, vote for Brandon Sproul. Go like the Brandon Sproul for Councilman um, page on Facebook, where you can get updates on all the things that I'm doing, uh, where I'm breaking down my platform and Project Equals and, and bringing that to you and showing you the things that I plan on doing. Uh, go get you some Who That merch, though. Yeah, we got Who That, we got who that merch, too, y'all. So. Yeah, get you some merchandise. Go, go to uh, uh, themothership.etsy.com. Is it Who That Mothership or Double? Mothership? Um, it is Etsy slash shop slash the Who That Mothership. Who That Mothership, yes. Or just go to the go to the uh, Facebook page and click the shop button. And it'll take you right there. It'll take you right there. So get Boom. you some, some Who That merch. Uh, check out my page. If you're not registered to vote, then I'm going to be putting out a video. Because, uh, there are apps to where you can register to vote. I'm going to be showing you how to work those apps so you can get registered so you can vote for your boy. Or even if you don't want to vote for me, just register, whatever. <laughs> um, that's pretty much all I got. What about you? Uh, now that we're talking a little bit, how, how is the political scene down there as far as uh, African-Americans and everything? How is that going in the Dallas area? Like, I know we had a bunch of like protest here and things over time. So how was that? Just real quick. Uh, socks, taboo, whoever, whoever wants it, take it. Um, I know there is a real big push for getting um, the voters out to register, excuse me, getting people out to vote. 
Um, registering to vote is a big deal, but it's more so making sure people get to the polls, especially in the areas that are what we would consider destitute. Mm -hmm. um, I know I was a part of a reform rally on June uh, 10th where we as bikers organized and went to city council and put them on notice. And so there are a group of us who are working on making sure people are registered to vote. Um, one of the women's motorcycle clubs here in Dallas, 2D Motorcycle Club, is really pushing um, voter registration. They are practicing safe COVID guidelines in their registration efforts, but they're doing a lot of social media campaigning and putting the information out there virtually. So just making sure people, you know, get registered vote is good, but they've got to get to the polls or it has to be so significant for them to get to the polls. So yeah. that's something that we really, um, I think not just in Dallas, more so just as a country, we need to do better at making sure like, you know, when the civil rights movement changed, they were taking people to the polls. They were making, you know, things were organized. And I, don't, I, I personally just don't think we're that organized right. yet. It's not like the protests were good, but there has to be more to it than just, oh, well, we want to change things. No, we want to just live fucking differently. Like okay. right, okay. Socks, anything? Ebony, either one of you guys? I got nothing. They're like, we're not touching that with a ten foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> That's my politics. The taboo. We might, we might have you back to talk politics from the That's Dallas. That's all right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. We That's might have you back. Mm -mm, I don't do politics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I just want to know where my money is going. Like, who's no, I mean. my money? <laughs> <laughs> yes. okay ladies uh i appreciate you coming we're just about hit that time and and i can't wait to see where you guys grow into and where this heads you know we're all in this together yes team, you know so i i'm really excited and i guess i'll see you on st louis huh yes oh, yeah. yes okay yeah uh-oh uh -oh. Whole time, so y'all gonna see me work and be mean, probably. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> me and uh, Ebony won't be working, so you know. Right, they are strictly a tequila shots. <laughs> yeah, that's still, not Everybody when we on our bike. That's coming. Brown liquor you only. Enjoy your, yes, you need to enjoy yourself. Everybody that's coming to be a participant. Now the ones that's working gonna be working. Right. But everybody else, like enjoy yourself. Like there's so much knowledge that'll be there. Like I'm, I'm excited about this. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be a good experience for everybody. So, and I'm excited yeah. to finally meet you guys. So, yes, yeah. really appreciate it. Well, um, stay blessed. Don't stress. Life is just a test. Thank you. The podcast will be back next week at 6 p.m. All right, y'all. And like always, who that? Who that? Who that? Who that? <laughs> <laughs>